Hello my friends, it's me again, your favorite denture wearer. Sure hope everybody's doing okay today. I have a smart doctor. I'm telling you. I was freaking out Wednesday because the muscle in my neck was inflamed. And it still is. It's inflamed. It hurts. That nerve is pulling on that muscle. You know, hitting that, activating that muscle and making it hurt like it did in my trapeze muscle, but not as bad. You know, I don't have to take aspirin or anything. Uh, it just kind of, it just feels like I've got whiplash, you know, like, but anyway, long story short, I called my doctor on Tuesday when I was having the issues of being dizzy and jittery. I was shaking really bad. I was dizzy. I was lightheaded. I felt like I was going to pass out and, and, uh, you know, I wasn't feeling good at all. And of course, I was freaking out thinking that the nerve was put, you know, inflaming that muscle and causing it to push on the artery in my neck and I wasn't getting enough blood to my brain. So I called my doctor when I knew the office was open and I explained to her how I was feeling and everything else. And she says, okay, she says, uh, what did you do this morning? I said, I didn't do anything. I just, you know, my brother didn't have to go to work till later this morning, so I just sat at the table and talked to him and had some coffee. And she goes, she asked me, she says, uh, were you lightheaded when you woke up? I said, no. She says, so explain your routine to me this morning. I said, I got up, did my bathroom routine, took my shower, got dressed, you know, didn't put my teeth in because I like to have my coffee without my teeth and stuff and I was going toothless and then I came out here and I sat down at the table and my brother was up and or my brother had come home from work at like seven o'clock because he didn't have a load to haul or something and and uh didn't have to go to work till nine. So I just sat here at the table and we had a conversation and I drank some coffee. And she says, explain your normal morning routine. I said, normally I get up, do my bathroom routine, take my shower, come out here, have a couple cups of coffee, go put my teeth in, do my workout and, you know, start doing, uh, I'll get on the computer and answer emails and comments and things like that and, you know, just normal stuff, right? And she goes, so, you normally have two cups of coffee? I said, usually I have two cups of coffee in the morning and then I'll pour a cup and, and you know, and I'll just kind of sip on it until like noon or one o'clock or whatever. And now I'll pour another cup and I'll sip on that until, you know, four or five o'clock or whatever. She goes, so how many cups did you have in the morning when you were talking to your brother? And I sat there and thought about it for a minute and I thought, holy sh, I drank a whole pot of coffee sitting there talking to my brother. I didn't realize I drank that much coffee. So I said, so maybe the fluid intake was too much or whatever. She says, no. She goes, you were high on caffeine. I said, what? She goes, you're high on caffeine. She goes, you've got the jitters, you're lightheaded, you're dizzy, you're... She goes, you're high on caffeine. She goes, don't drink any more coffee today. <laughs> she goes, how long does a pot of coffee usually last you? I said, usually all day. But I sat here at the table having a conversation with my brother, which is rare because we usually don't have conversations. You know, we talk a little bit here, talk a little bit there, but we don't usually have full-on conversations like we did on Tuesday morning. And I was sitting here Tuesday morning just drinking coffee, talking to him, and I drank a whole pot of coffee in the span of about th two hours. A whole pot. So I was higher than a kite. <laughs> I had the caffeine jitters. That's what it was. So it was a false alarm. I didn't have, it wasn't the muscle pushing on the nerve causing me. This is how our brains work. When there's something wrong and we feel different, we don't 
put two and two together. I would have never thought that I would have never put it together that I just drank too much coffee and I had the caffeine jitters. I've never in my life had caffeine jitters. That was a first. So she says, call me back around noon if you're not doing any better. And I said, okay. And she goes, don't drink any more coffee. She goes, eat something. That'll help to dilute the caffeine in your system. So I ate a sausage and egg sandwich, and within an hour I was feeling a lot better. Caffeine jitters. Can you believe that? I've never had caffeine jitters. But that's how our brains work, you know. One little thing, you know, we're having difficulty with something, and then our brain starts firing off all these bad things that are happening to us, and we don't stop to just think of the simple things like, I drank a whole pot of coffee in two hours. Well, six, seven, eight, nine, three hours. I drank a whole pot of coffee in three hours. I would have not thought of that because I've never had caffeine jitters before. I wouldn't have put that together. So by noon, I was feeling a, a lot better. I wasn't dizzy or lightheaded. I wasn't shaking or I felt like I was having a hypoglycemic attack. At the same time, my neck was hurting really bad. I mean, really bad. It was, it was hurting really bad. I couldn't even turn my head to the left. <laughs> so I just, you know, assumed that that muscle was inflamed enough that it was choking off that artery in my neck and causing me to be lightheaded and dizzy and shaky and my my mind was going stupid. And she told me, she goes, you know, a lot of the over-the-counter pain medications you buy have caffeine in them because caffeine does help with pain and inflammation. So aspirin has caffeine, Tylenol, uh, you know, acetaminophen, uh, Excedrin, things like that. They all have caffeine in them because caffeine is helps with pain and inflammation. And then she said, but just like everything else, too much of a good thing is still too much. She goes, you probably drank so much coffee that you got high on caffeine and it also kind of inflamed the muscle a little bit more because it gives you energy. So your muscle got inflamed a little bit more, which caused more pain, which caused your brain to start thinking a lot of things were wrong. False alarm, thank goodness. I can turn my head to the left today, which is awesome. So, it's the same way with our dentures. You know, we get these false alarms with our dentures. And I can't really explain I've had my dentures long enough now that it's getting to the point where I can't remember little false alarms I had with my dentures, but we do have false alarms with our dentures. Somebody asked me how I can keep my bottom denture in without using denture fit or adhesive, having such a shallow ridge on the bottom. And I've showed you guys this before. That's how deep my denture is right there. That's it in the front. So you can see it's not very deep. There's really basically no ridge. There's barely enough ridge to hold onto my gum. And somebody asked me how I keep that in. And I've explained it before, but I'll try to explain it again. I keep my tongue flattened out on the back of the denture. So when I'm talking, I only use the tip of my tongue. So if there was a way for me to zoom in and show you how I talk, 
it would make a difference, but I can't. I can't zoom in on my mouth like that and show you how I talk. But I keep the back of my tongue flattened out on the back of the denture. And something that we all, or a lot of us, have a habit of doing is we'll be sitting somewhere or just sitting in silence or whatever, and we have a tendency, if we're not using adhesive, we have a tendency to sit with our mouth closed and be doing this. Lifting the denture. It's a habit a lot of us get into. And I have to tell you, the more you sit there and lift up that denture, the harder it is to control it. We have to get past the habit of doing that. And it seems like, I remember when I was using adhesive, I had a tendency to try to break the adhesive loose. Um, or I would feel like the denture was getting loose, so I'd put my tongue under it and push up on it to see if it was loose or not, instead of just clamping back down. We, a lot of us have that habit of, and we don't realize it. We don't think about it. We, our denture comes loose and it's not something that we think about. It's not, oh, well, I did that. I'm the one that kept pushing on it with my tongue instead of just clamping back down. I'm the one that kept pushing on it with my tongue and lifting it with my tongue until the adhesive broke loose. We don't think about that. We think, damn, adhesive won't hold. Not holding my denture in. My denture keeps coming loose. <laughs> and we don't realize we're the ones doing it. I do remember a time where I had done a video about making your adhesive last longer throughout the day and by not lifting the denture with your tongue all the time and keeping your mouth slightly open, not your mouth but your teeth, keeping your teeth separated. I can't really explain it at this point because I haven't used adhesive in so long. Once I figured out how to keep the adhesive in for the majority of the day, because I was re-gluing eight or ten times a day, and that was really getting frustrated, frustrating. And once I figured out what I was doing, causing the adhesive to break loose, and I stopped doing that, then I only had to re-glue a couple times a day, which was awesome, you know. So studies have shown that most people that wear a bottom denture have to re-glue two or three times a day. That's average. That's normal. But if you're re-gluing five, six, eight, ten times a day, you're doing something wrong. You're either breaking that denture loose with your tongue and don't realize it, or your denture is just way too big for your mouth and there's too much room for fluid to get under there and work on that adhesive and you need to get something done about that. But once I figured out how to not be constantly lifting on the denture with my tongue and I would go to eat something and I would feel the adhesive come loose, the denture would lift in the back. I wasn't going to get up and go re-glue. I figured out how to finish my meal by taking very small bites and pushing slightly on the bottom denture to keep it in place. And it didn't occur to me immediately, but it occurred to me over a period of time that the technique I was using helps keep the denture in place and I wouldn't re-glue. And I would go the rest of the day with no adhesive in my denture. And I just wouldn't put my tongue under it and work on it because I knew it was already loose. I didn't want it to become any looser. And then it just dawned on me one day, I'm going to try this without adhesive. And I didn't put adhesive in my bottom denture that day. And 
it was it was difficult it was a trying process it takes time to learn how to go adhesive free you're not going to do it overnight it's not going to happen you're not just going to immediately quit using adhesive and learn how to eat without adhesive it takes time it takes practice so as far as speaking goes you'll notice the the, the further you open your mouth and lift your tongue, the easier that muscle underneath the denture wants to throw the denture out. So like this, I'm speaking to you perfectly right now, but if I open my mouth further, see? If I open my mouth further when I talk, that tongue underneath, the muscle underneath the tongue and you say something like boil, <laughs> which is hard to do with your mouth that wide open. It's a combination of the way we have to purse our lips to say a certain word and the muscle under the tongue that pops a denture up. So the closer we keep our teeth together when we're speaking, keep your tongue flattened out across the back of the denture not where the teeth are, just below the teeth. Keep your tongue flattened out and only use the tip of your tongue to speak with. You'll find that it's much easier to articulate your words correctly and that muscle under the tongue and your lips aren't trying to throw that denture out all the time. So that's one little trick for you for helping you learn how to speak without adhesive. And what I, what I, Here's a suggestion. If you're trying to go adhesive free, number one, make sure that your dentures actually fit correctly. If you're in your immediate dentures and you haven't had a soft reline from the doctor and you're six months or whatever into your immediate dentures, your dentures are way too big. If you're getting soft relines from your doctor, it's much easier to go adhesive free than it is for somebody who just gets a set of dentures slapped in their mouth and has to wait an entire year before they get anything else done. Like what happened in my case. I was supposed to wait an entire year, but I elected to pay for a hard reline on my dentures at six months. Because my dentures were so big in my mouth, I was using a tube of adhesive a week, which was way too much adhesive. So, in that instance, if you're getting soft relines from your doctor, it's much easier to learn how to go adhesive free right off the bat because your dentures are actually fitting your mouth correctly. So, the point is, I've told several people this that I know, when you get up in the morning and you put your dentures in, practice going adhesive free. Try eating one meal without adhesive. If you get frustrated because you can't control that bottom denture, put some adhesive in it. Don't let yourself get to the point where you want to throw your dentures out the window. Put a little adhesive in your dentures. But then once that adhesive breaks loose throughout the day, don't immediately re-glue them. Continue trying to go adhesive free until you get frustrated again. I mean, that's the only way we learn something. When you, when you learn how to ride a bicycle, you crash, you get upset, you don't want to ride again. But the next day you want to try again because you really want to learn how to ride a bicycle. So you go out and you try again and you crash. And the next day you try again and you crash. And the next day you try again, but you got a little further down the road before you crashed. The next day you try again and you, got, and you went a little bit further. And every day you go a little bit further. Pretty soon you're riding around the block and you're excited because you can go around the block at least once or twice before you crash. And you're learning things and you're excited because you're learning things and, and you're happy because you're accomplishing something and you're doing something you want to do. When you learned how to walk, you stood up on your legs and your legs were wobbly and you fell on your butt. And then you got back up and you fell on your butt again and you got back up because you wanted to learn how to walk. It was, it was in your, it was, it's your instinct to want to learn. We all have that instinct.
to want to learn. So it's no different than with your dentures. When you start trying to go adhesive free and you start getting really frustrated, put some adhesive in and then try again tomorrow. You're not going to go adhesive free miraculously overnight. It is not going to happen. <laughs> but it can be done. And I'm proof of that. So, I love my doctor. She's so smart. Anyway, I, I am so happy that it was just a... So, here it is. There's my coffee pot. And as you can see, I still have most of a pot left. I'm working on cup number one right now. Cup number one. And I've been up since 6.30 and it's 8.07. And that's cup number one. So on Tuesday, I sat here in the span of I've been up, I get up at 6. I, I say 6.30 because I'm out of the shower and getting dressed by 6.30. That's when I have my first cup of coffee, 6.30. So, on Tuesday in the span of about three hours, I drank an entire pot of coffee. I was sitting here having a conversation with my brother and honestly, I didn't think about it. I just sat here drinking coffee like, you know, Having a conversation, drinking coffee, fill up the cup, drink another cup, fill up the cup, drink another cup, just sitting here having a conversation with my brother. And I never put two and two together. I was high as a kite on caffeine. That's never happened to me before. <laughs> I've always drank coffee slowly. I've never slammed cup after cup after cup after cup. So now I know what it feels like to have a caffeine high. And I don't like it. I'll never do it again. <laughs> that is not going to happen again to me. I'll be a lot more careful now when I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> anyway, my neck is feeling much better now. I can actually turn my head a little bit. It's going to take some time. But, you know, nerve pinches, like I said, when this first happened, Nerve pinches don't, it can take a year or two or three or five for a nerve pinch to finally go away. So, you know, it, and there's a possibility that that goo could slip down a little bit further and start affecting my shoulder and trapeze muscle again or under my shoulder blade or cause me pain under my ribs or it's just something I have to deal with until it finally until my body finally reabsorbs that goo or until I get it operated on. It's just something I have to deal with. So I'm very glad, very happy that Tuesday was a false alarm. That was the video you saw on Wednesday. I'm very, very happy that Tuesday was a false alarm for me because my brain was going stupid. I was thinking all kinds of things like I'm going to have a stroke, I'm going to pass out and not wake up or whatever, you know. It's, it's funny how our brains work. I was I was concerned because I was outside and I was I wasn't cold but I was shaking like like I was having a hypoglycemic attack but at the same time I was lightheaded I was dizzy I was I couldn't concentrate I couldn't I couldn't stop long enough to think of what I was going to say I had eight billion things running through my brain all at the same time jumbling up in my head and I couldn't pause and think about my next sentence or my next line of words. So that was weird for me. I don't think I ever, I don't think I want to go through that again. So I'm going <laughs> to be careful when I'm drinking coffee. From now on, I'm staying on my routine. All right, my friends, that's it for today. I hope this video helps some of you. Um, if you're trying to learn how to go adhesive free and you're struggling 
check out my dentures versus food channel linked in the description there will be a denture fit link and then two other links right below that one of them is my bills life like it or don't channel the other one is my dentures versus food channel click on that link go subscribe to that channel that channel will help you learn how to eat correctly with your dentures and it'll do two things one it'll help the bottom denture stay glued in longer if you're eating correctly and two if you're going adhesive free it will teach you techniques on how to eat properly so you don't get so frustrated and your dentures not flopping around all over in your mouth i hope everybody has an amazing day i will see you in my next video don't forget to keep smiling keep trying and whatever you do never give up